in this video, I'm going to share with you my top 10 personal favorite science fiction comics of all time. And this was a tough list to make. Not only did I have to whittle down all of my favorite science fiction comics into a list of only 10, but I also sort of had to define what I meant as science fiction for this list. And that was difficult for me because I really like the fact that science fiction is so generous and so versatile and so encompassing that can work so well with other genres, subgenres, and types of story that I really don't spend too much time thinking about what is and is not science fiction. But the whole point of making a list for me is to test and stretch myself, so I wanted to be a little more stringent. I did come up with a list of honorable mentions that I made a separate video for, and if you haven't seen that, you can find that linked up in this corner of your screen and in the description below. In making this final selection, I found myself with even more honorable mentions, but I think I'll leave them out for right now and get on straight with the list. So let's get started with my personal top 10 science fiction comics of all time. We'll start with a heavy hitter. My first book is Akira by Katsuhiro Otomo. This is a classic and deeply influential manga, a cyberpunk dystopia that comments on government, anarchy, terrorism, and a whole host of other subjects in an action-packed, thrilling, and thought-provoking adventure. Akira made a deep impact on me when I first read it, but what I have found marvelous about it is that revisiting it so many years later, the themes and struggles that run through this futuristic tale are as fresh today as when they were first written, and in spite of all its influence, and all of the copycats and all of the clones, Akira retains its singular power. If you've never read this series, I think you'll be surprised by how much of a punch it still packs. Next up on my list is We Three, written by Grant Morrison and art by Frank Quietly. Grant Morrison obviously has a number of very famous science fiction comics to his name, but I find the three issue We Three he did with Frank Quietly to be his finest work. The science fiction in this might not be as grandiose or universe bending as some of his other stories, but to me it's the most affecting and effective of his works. Combining questions about weapons development and animal experimentation, this powerful amazing journey of three cyborg animals is actually a violent escape and chase story. The artwork and design of this book is remarkable, but it derives its biggest power from the pathos of the story of these animals. If you've read other Grant Morrison sci-fi, but not We Three, I think you might be surprised by this. And if you've never read any Grant Morrison or Frank Quietly, I can't recommend anything more than this standalone story. Next up is a book by one of my favorite comics writers, Alan Moore, whose top 10 also featured in my honorable mentions. Just like Grant Morrison, Alan Moore has a number of books that could very easily compete for a spot in the top 10. And Tom Strong, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, V for Vendetta, as well as the anthology collection, the DC stories of Alan Moore, all could have made it onto this list. Still, to be perfectly honest, for me, nothing comes close to the Ballad of Halo Jones. This to me is an unsung masterpiece almost. The science fiction it is hard and pervasive. The universe that it creates is mind boggling. It goes from grimy gutters to distant galaxies breathtakingly. I find the formal structure and storytelling of this to be very impressive. And Ian Gibson's art over here may be some of my favorite science fiction art. The futuristic world that it creates is so fully fleshed out and realized, and yet it doesn't rest on its laurels in just creating that universe. Universe. It has such tricky and clever and funny and interesting stories within that world that I'd really hold this up as a template of how clever and entertaining science fiction can be. I think The Ballad of Halo Jones is my second favorite Alan Moore work after From Hell. It's just that good. And there was no way it wasn't making it into my top 10. Another comic I had no doubt was making it into my top 10 is The Moon Moth by Humayun Ibrahim, adapted from a story by Jack Vance. I think this comic could very easily be one of those best comics you've never heard of, Spotlights. From first, second publishers and based on a short story by sci-fi legend Jack Vance, this is also one of the best jobs of comics adaptation I have ever read. Telling a thrilling detective story set on a very alien world where people are so prosperous that they don't need to work and the only real currency is is reputation and everyone wears masks and communicates with music. It's hard to describe how alien a world it is and how wonderfully Humayun Ibrahim has captured it. Like the best science fiction, it sets up for you the world completely and then starts playing with it in order to tell its story. The way the comics medium is used over here to represent not just the alien culture and the costumes, but the communication through music in different contexts, frankly makes this one of the boldest and most experimental comics I've 
I've read while maintaining a completely accessible detective mystery. I really wish more people talked about this. As I said, when I was making this top 10, there were some books that I debated. This was not one of them. I've never read anything else by Humayun Ibrahim and I believe that was his first comic so that also makes it one of the best debuts that I've ever read. The next comic on my list is Ex Machina by Brian K. Vaughan and Tony Harris. Brian K. Vaughan is obviously famous for Saga which did make my honorable mentions and Why the Last Man which I disqualified from this list because it only has one single science fictional element but honestly I think that Ex Machina is my favorite Brian K. Vaughan comic. It marries the story of the world's only superhero a comic book fan who after an accident found himself with the power to command and talk to machines with a kind of West Wing political drama. This story of a superhero who quit being a vigilante on that side of the law in order to run for office and became the mayor of New York is not just a thrilling political drama but is funny, witty, smart, the kind of things I expect from Brian K. Vaughan but also unmistakably science fiction. I'm not spoiling anything for people who haven't read it when I say that everything from how he gets his powers to the nature of his powers to how he uses them is unquestionably sci-fi in a way that superhero comics may not always be. It's been reprinted and is easily available these days and as I said I consider this better than Why the Last Man and Saga. Very often when people think about sci-fi, they think about sci-fi epics either in multiple volumes or with many books or many movies in a franchise. But honestly, sci-fi has always been very good at the short story as well. We saw that The Moon Moth was a slim book based on a short story and the next book on my list is slimmer still, an original Moon Cop by Tom Gold. You may be familiar with Tom Gold's comics and cartoons from newspapers and Moon Cop definitely has that distinctive style as well as touches of that humor but I think is more closely related to Gold's previous work Goliath which was funny and sad and full of spaces and silences that made things echo for the reader. At first glance you might mistake Moon Cop for a slightly jokey or a gag filled comic but that's not at all the case. It's a study of loneliness and connection of technology and commerce and the effects that it has on individual lives all done with such a light touch that you get to the end of the book before you know what's hit you. But after I finished it, it stayed with me for days the way that big meaty texts do. And for something this quote unquote slight and sparse, I thought it was an incredible achievement. I've read Moon Cop four or five times now and each time has been an absolute joy. Perhaps the most deceptive book on this list Moon Cop by Tom Gold. The next book on my list might be considered by some people to be a cheat, but I really don't think so. It's Soft City by Harit and Push Wagner. Written and drawn by Norwegian artist Push Wagner between 1969 and 1974. Five. The original art for this book was apparently lost until rediscovered in 2008. But historical curiosity aside, I found myself completely hypnotized by this book. It has a vision of our society as this replicated, clone, urban nightmare almost. And just sequences of getting up and medicating yourself and then going to work and going to an office. To me, this is unmistakably science fiction because it seems to project the world that we live in forward. Now, the interesting thing is it was done in the 60s and the 70s. And even though people are driving old fashioned cars and wearing hats, it feels like a future dystopia. And it reminds me at times of 1984 or Brave New World or any of the science fiction classics about the mechanized, dehumanized human existence. When I think about the cracked mirror aspects of science fiction, I love there is no doubt in my mind that this book, Soft City by Push Wagner, is one of the best pieces of science fiction I've encountered in comics. From something perhaps a little controversial to something I don't think anyone's going to have uh, trouble recognizing as science fiction, the next comic on my list is Pluto by Naoki Urasawa based on a story by Tezuka. There are eight volumes in this sci-fi mystery about someone ridding the world of its legendary robots. This series deals with one of my favorite questions in science fiction, what makes humans human as opposed to androids, robots, cyborgs, uh, whatever it is that we create. Where is the difference between artificial intelligence and intelligence and what does it matter really? Things that are central in movies like Blade Runner or television shows like 
like uh, the new Battlestar Galactica. At the same time, adapting an Astro Boy story from Tezuka, this Like the Moon Moth is also a magnificent job of adaptation. Adaptation, especially in comics, very often becomes just about illustrating something that already exists. It's stories like this that absolutely transform the original and use its themes to mine new ideas and questions that are truly rewarding works of art. The way the story unfolds, the questions that it raises about humanity, and the job that it does adapting the original all contribute to making this one of my favorite sci-fi comics of all time. The second last comic on my list was almost one of my honorable mentions but pulled into the top 10 at the last minute. It is Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind by Hayao Miyazaki. Like some great science fiction, including a couple of my honorable mentions, this does take place in a post-apocalyptic scenario. It's a post-technological sci-fi story. And the only reason it may not have made my top 10 is I was wondering if it was closer to uh, steampunk or fantasy than to science fiction. But I dismiss that as foolishness. It's very obviously science fiction. It's brilliant science fiction. It's one of the best comics I've ever read. As I said in one of my shelf videos, if you've only seen the movie, it does not do justice to the comic, which is written by the same person who made the movie. So I'm not at all criticizing Miyazaki, who I love. But the questions in Nausicaa have to do with our relationship with the world we live in, with the environment. Themes that are close to Miyazaki's heart, but also make for some very interesting and some very poetic science fiction. I may have added this to the list last, but it's as worthy as anything else I have here. And the final comic on my top 10 sci-fi comics of all time is Transmetropolitan by Warren Ellis and Derek Robertson. The word gonzo is used all the time to refer to Spider Jerusalem, the hero of Warren Ellis's Transmetropolitan. And it's easy to understand why. He definitely has a Hunter S. Thompson approach with violence and anger. And the comic is perhaps one of the angriest mainstream comics I've ever read. But it makes my list for being unabashedly sci-fi, being saturated with science fiction in every single page, every single panel of the story, whether it's in looking at technology or society or politics. Transmetropolitan really feels like a profane and adult futurama. <laughs> it has a million different elements being thrown at you, or different concepts being introduced all the time, but the ethical dilemmas and the questions that it poses are universal. One of the things I love the most about science fiction is its ability to ask questions, and the kind of questions that Transmetropolitan asks may be polemical and may be very much about Warren Ellis his political point of view, but are presented with such finesse and with such craft, weaving in the science part of the science fiction into its fabric in such a unique way that I think that science fiction fans who haven't read Transmetropolitan are really doing themselves a little bit of a disservice. That was really tough. There are a lot of things that got left by the side. If you've seen my shelf videos so far, you know that there's a lot more science fiction on them than what I showed over here. So that should tell you how difficult and painful this list was to make. I left out anything that I thought was steampunk. I left out anything that I thought was mainly fantasy. I left out some of my favorite comics of all time, irrespective of genre, because they didn't have enough science fiction on them or it wasn't about science fiction every single page. I have no one to blame but myself, but I hope that you enjoyed what I was able to come up with. I'd love to know what your favorite science fiction comics are and what you recommend I read. And let me know if you'd like a closer look at any of the books that I talked about here. Thank you as always for watching. This has been For the Love of Comics and I'll see you at the next video.